Ronnie Millsap was born January 16, 1943, in Robbinsville, North Carolina. A congenital disorder left him almost completely blind from birth. Abandoned by his mother as an infant, he was raised in poverty by his grandparents in the Smoky Mountains until he was sent to the Governor Moorhead School for the Blind in Raleigh, North Carolina at age five. During his childhood, Millsap developed a passion for music, particularly the late night radio broadcast of country music, gospel music, and rhythm and blues. When he was seven, his instructors noticed his musical talents. Soon afterwards, he began studying classical music formally at Governor Moorhead and learned several instruments, eventually mastering the piano. When he was 14, a slap from one of the school's house parents caused him to lose what very limited vision he had in his left eye. With the national breakthrough of Elvis Presley in 1956, Millsap became interested in rock and roll music and formed a rock band called The Aberrations with fellow high school students. Now during his concerts, Millsap would often pay tribute to the musicians of the 1950s who inspired him, including Ray Charles, Little Richard, Jerry Lee Lewis, and Elvis Presley. Now what's interesting to note is that Ronnie Millsap was awarded a full college scholarship and briefly attended Young Harris College in Young Harris, Georgia, with plans to become a lawyer. During this time, Millsap joined a popular local R&B band called The Dimensions that played gigs in the Atlanta area and became a regular attraction at the rough and rowdy Royal Peacock Club. It was in the fall of 1964 when Millsap declined a scholarship to law school and left college to pursue a full-time career in music. It was during this time that he met Joyce Reed one night at a dinner party, and the two would be married in 1965. In 1963, Millsap met Atlanta disc jockey Pat Hughes, who became an early supporter of his music career. Millsap recorded his first single, Total Disaster, with the B-side being It Went to Your Head which enjoyed some local success in the Atlanta area. The single sold 15,000 copies with the help of Hughes, who played the record on his radio show. Around this time, Millsap auditioned for a job as a keyboardist for musician J.J. Kale. In 1965, Millsap signed with the New York-based Scepter Records recording several obscure singles for the label over the next few years, and working briefly with other soul musicians like Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder. Also in 1965, Millsap scored his first hit with the Ashford and Simpson pen single, Never Had It So Good, which peaked at number 19 on the R&B chart in November of that year. It would be his only successful single during his time with Scepter. Millsap cut another Ashford and Simpson tune, Let's Go Get Stoned, that was relegated to a B-side. A few months later, it became a million-selling single for Ray Charles, who heard and liked Millsap's version of the song so much that he decided to record it himself. Millsap's scepter recording of Ain't No Soul Left in These Old Shoes eventually found popularity in England. In the late 1960s, after moving to Memphis, Tennessee, Millsap worked for producer Chips Moman and became a popular weekly attraction at the Memphis nightclub TJ's. During this time, Moman helped Millsap land work as a session musician on numerous projects including several recordings with Elvis Presley, such as Don't Cry Daddy in 1969 and Kentucky Rain in 1970. That same year, Millsap made the lower reaches of the pop charts with the single Loving You is a Natural Thing. He recorded and released his debut album, Ronnie Millsap, on Warner Brothers in 1971. In December 1972, Millsap relocated to Nashville 
After a chance meeting with country music star Charlie Pride, who was in the audience for a Millsap gig at the nightclub Whiskey A Go Go on Sunset Boulevard in Los Angeles. Pride was impressed with Millsap's singing and encouraged him to change course and focus on country music. Millsap began working with Pride's manager, Jack D. Johnson, and was signed to RCA Records in 1973. Now he released his first single for RCA that year, I Hate You, which became his first country music success, peaking at number 10 on the country charts. In 1974, Millsap toured with Charlie Pride as an opening act and had two number one singles, Pure Love, written by Eddie Rabin, and the Chris Christopherson composition, Please Don't Tell Me How the Story Ends which won Millsap his first Grammy. In 1975, he revived the Don Gibson song, I'd Be a Legend in My Time, and scored another number one hit with Daydreams About Night Things. From 1976 to 1978, Millsap became one of country music's biggest stars. He scored seven number one singles in a row, including the Grammy winning I'm a stand by my woman man. What a difference you've made in my life. The most significant of this series was it was almost like a song in 1977, a piano-based ballad which became his most successful single of the 1970s. In addition to topping the Billboard Hot Country charts, the song was his first entry onto the Billboard Hot 100 pop music chart since Please Don't Tell Me How the Story Ends, and reached number 95. It was almost like a song reached number 16. It was also his first song to make the adult contemporary chart, stopping at number 7. While the song was Millsap's only crossover success of the 70s, he continued to achieve hits on the country music charts for the remainder of the decade. Now, Millsap's sound shifted towards string-laden pop ballads during the late 1970s, which resulted in crossover success on the pop charts beginning in the early 1980s. From 1980 until 1983, he scored a series of 11 number one singles. Millsap's greatest hits album, released in 1980, included a new single, Smoky Mountain Rain which became a number one smash on the country charts. The single peaked in the top 20 on the pop music chart and also became the first of two Millsap songs to score number one on the adult contemporary charts. Now he had other crossover successes that included the top five pop single, There's No Getting Over Me, and two top 20 songs, I Wouldn't Have Missed It For The World and Any Day Now, the latter which lasted five weeks at number one on Billboard's adult contemporary chart. He also had some success with He's Got You. All four songs reached number one on the country music charts. Although the series of number one hits ended in 1983, the last song of the series, Stranger in My House, was still successful on all three charts, peaking at number five on the country music charts number 23 on the pop music chart, and number 8 on the adult contemporary charts. It would be just a few months later, Don't You Know How Much I Love You was released, becoming Millsap's last significant entry on the pop music charts, stopping at number 58. However, it, along with others, still became major successes on the adult contemporary chart. These successful singles included Show Her, Still Losing You, and finally the Grammy-winning song Lost in the 50s Tonight, his last pop crossover success in 1985. Like other artists of the same era, such as Linda Rodstad, Glenn Campbell, Marty Robbins, and Ray Charles, Millsap's albums during the 1980s often featured songs in a variety of musical styles that showcased his remarkable range and versatility as a singer. Millsap, in fact, became the first country music artist 
to be played in full rotation on the rock music channel MTV with his 1984 single, She Loves My Car. Now, it was in his 1990 autobiography that Millsap explained, I'm a singer, not a vocal stylist. My breathing is correct. My enunciation is precise. Because of that, I can sing anybody's music. Yet there are stylists whose technical skills are so underdeveloped, they can sing only their own songs their own way. They might be remembered for their hits longer than I am. I'll probably be working longer than they are. I can sing whatever the times and the trends demand. Now it was between 1985 and 1987, Millsap enjoyed a series of uninterrupted number one country singles, enjoying great success at this time with She Keeps the Home Fires Burning, In Love, Snap Your Fingers, Where Do the Nights Go, and the Grammy-winning duet with Kenny Rogers, Make No Mistake, She's Mine. In 1989, Millsap had his last number one song, With a Woman in Love, although he still remained successful on the charts. Other top ten singles between 1989 and 1991 include Houston Solution, Stranger Things Have Happened, Turn That Radio On, and a remake of the 1950s hits, Since I Don't Have You, his last adult contemporary hit, and Are You Loving Me Like I'm Loving You. With the help of writer Tom Carter, Millsap wrote and released his autobiography titled Almost Like a Song in 1990. In 1992, he had a major success with All is Fair in Love and War. The song featured rock guitarist Mark Knopfler on lead guitar and peaked at number 11, his last top 40 country hit. True Believer peaked in 1993 at number 30. By that time, however, Millsap's chart success began to decline, as did that of most other country stars of the 1970s and 1980s. In the wake of major changes in the country industry that pushed most of the older stars of the industry out of rotation on the wave of new country stations that signed on at that time. Millsap has remained one of country music's best-loved and most successful artists, despite the lack of radio airplay since the mid-1990s. In 1993, he left RCA for Liberty and released the album True Believer, which failed to achieve significant radio airplay, although the title song scored number 30 on the country charts. In 2000, Millsap resurfaced with a two-CD set, 40 number one hits, featuring a new single entitled Time, Love, and Money. The new collection earned a gold record, although the single failed to score on the charts. During 2004, Millsap worked with producer Jerry F. Sherrill to record his first non-country album since the early 1970s, just for a thrill. The project was a collection of American popular jazz music standards, which earned Millsap a Grammy Award nomination that year, and returned to a mainstream contemporary country music style with the album My Life. Their first single was Local Girls, which reached number 54. In 2009, Millsap released a two-CD set entitled Then Sings My Soul, which featured 24 hymns and gospel songs, including Up to Zion. Millsap's studio album, Country Again, was released in July of 2011. The album was a return to a more traditional country sound. The first single, If You Don't Want Me To, commonly known as The Freeze, is a previous Millsap recording from the 1980s and it's a popular line dancing song in southern Louisiana. On May 2, 2013, Millsap performed at the memorial service of country legend George Jones, singing the Jones classic, 
when the grass grows over me. Now, it was on December 27, 2013, when it was announced that Millsap would release a new album. Summer, number 17, was released in March of 2014. The album features new recordings of classic pop and R&B songs from the 50s and the 60s. On June 1, 2014, Rolling Stone magazine ranked Smoky Mountain Rain number 96 on their list of the 100 greatest country songs. Just to let you know, Millsap is still releasing music. In April of 2021, he released the album A Better Word for Love and is out still performing with concert dates, scheduled up until December of 2000. Okay, that's the end of our video. I sure hope you enjoyed it. If you like this type of video and want us to keep producing them, please like and subscribe. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Thank you.